This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of the Bartholomew Town Podcast. It's Bill Bartholomew here with you for new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. And of course, whenever breaking news happens today, continuing our recurring series inside Rhode Island Public Health, welcoming in Camille Smith from Spalding Rehabilitation for an issue that is Well, it's fairly acute. It's fairly specific. It definitely applies to me, and I know certainly some of you out there who are listening as musicians, but I think can also be extrapolated out to everybody, especially in the work-from-home environment, and that is ergonomics. So the conversation was framed around the issue that is something I can speak to personally, ergonomics and the injuries that can occur from bad practices as a musician. But I think this also applies to a lot of us who are working from home in these really wacky scenarios. You know, um, I have a desk set up, obviously, and even so, I've had all kinds of like weird things happen where it's like, all right, is is my chair proper? Am I, um, you know, my keyboard? What level is my monitor at? All of these things over the course of the pandemic have totally flared up. And just speaking to a lot of my friends who are musicians, This is something that prior to the pandemic, we've all in many ways dealt with in terms of, you know, holding an instrument and even honestly transporting stuff. So again, this is, this is an acute topic. And when I booked it, it was kind of like, well, I know non-musicians, are they really going to get anything out of this? And then as we started to think about it and examine it a little bit more, I was like, well, actually a lot of the, the conversation is, is for everybody. So um, this this is part of our Inside Rhode Island Public Health recurring series where the way I've been kind of describing this to people is any public health issue that's not COVID or a hospital merger, we want to talk about it. <laughs> so, I mean, I remember we a couple of weeks ago we had the Dental Lifeline Network on, which, you know, again, the, the, these are topics that are critical to public health and in general our overall well-being, but because of the monster issues in this space, COVID, the hospital merger, we have seen many of these topics fall off of the board as areas of of discussion. So that's the purpose of this series. That's also a nice chance to highlight, you know, so much was made with the the collapse, if you will, of the hospital merger, the proposed academic integrated integrated academic healthcare system between Lifespan, Care New England, and Brown University. So much was made of, you know, the negative outcome of that. But I think we also have to understand that even without that formal integrated academic healthcare system, there's a tremendous amount of talent through our university infrastructure and just through our hospital infrastructure in general. And there's a lot of specialization that occurs here in Rhode Island. And I think it's important to highlight that because our identity as a state can in many ways be forged around our healthcare system, which is, again, there's obvious issues. We know that. We've we've heard that time and time again, and we understand it on, a, on an acute and general level um, through the pandemic and beyond. But we've got a lot of talent here. So that's kind of the purpose of this series, Inside Rhode Island Public Health, which will be a monthly series here on B-Town. And as always, it's a great pleasure to have you on board here on the show. Remember to follow me on social media, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, even LinkedIn. Just search for me, Bill Bartholomew. All right, so I was just saying offline, as much as any topic, and and, and even with as acute and specific a topic as this is today, um, it, it impacts me on a very personal level. And that is the ergonomic challenges that musicians face. And I think broadly extrapolated in the public health realm to everybody, because these challenges are certainly exacerbated in work from home, where you've got desk spaces or workspaces in general that aren't necessarily ergonomically sound. And just in general, this is a this is a major issue. So we're really pleased to talk about this today on Inside public health here on B-Town. So I guess if each of you would introduce yourself and we'll uh, we'll get this started. All right. So thank you for having me. Um, my name is Camille Pabon-Smith. I am an occupational therapist and a hand therapist, um, which is a specialty in occupational therapy. And I have been working for over 20 years with uh, upper extremity um, orthopedic conditions, um, anything from Um, nerve injuries and trauma, uh, fractures, you name it, I've treated it. And uh, I personally am a musician. So as I was growing up, 
Uh, I actually wanted to go to Berkeley and had music interests, um, but I loved science as well. So I always wondered where people from um, the symphonies uh, would get their therapy. And I never really figured it out um, until recently, actually, I, I was working at Brigham and Women's and there is a performance arts um, occupational therapist there. Um, and she does all the musicians in the Boston area and uh, me just helping her and then just observing what she does. I was just so intrigued and, and fell in love with um, just pretty much the, the physical and um, psychological demands that, you know, a, a musician goes through and, and being able to work with them so that they can get back to working at their best without injuries. Um, so it's something that I've, I've been wanting to, now that I'm in Rhode Island, trying to start something like that here for the people in this area. I know that when I was working in Boston, there were Rhode Islanders who were going to Boston and they were only being able to be seen maybe once, you know, in a while, because it's not like they can have continuing treatment, obviously, with travel. Um, so I think it's perfect um, having this um, area here that I can work with. So. That's my interest. Yeah. And uh, Luke. Uh, yeah. I, my name is Luke Davis. I'm the regional director for the Spalding Outpatient Clinics. And I just wanted to chime in for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to sign off and let you guys um, go at it. But I just wanted to brag on me just for a quick minute because there's only a, a, there's not a whole lot of these certified hand therapists in the state. I, I failed this test twice, by the way. So <laughs> it is a very difficult test to be able to become certified, let alone do as much as what she's been able to to do with some of the musicians and and uh, folks in the community that come in with just various hand industries uh, or hand injuries, but it's it's um it's it's a good field to be in and and she and, and Matt Ricketts and our other um, certified hand therapists they do a, they do a great job with with their patients. I love that we get like the, the little plug at the beginning and it's like a hot air balloon takes off now and you're just waving to the people with that plug. So much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bye, guys. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for that. I guess, you know, so I can, like I said, I can speak to this on a firsthand basis. I mean, a lot of the audience probably knows that I'm a musician and, and still am. I mean, I'm got two shows this week and I'm constantly recording and I'm surrounded by instruments and so on and so forth. And I have, I've dealt with this and I've had plenty of, of conversations with physical therapists, friends of mine. In fact, a friend of mine who's a physical therapist here in Rhode Island and I were thinking, should we make a book about how to like stretch for musicians? Musicians, whether you're in a classical context or a popular context, you're categorized from get-go separately from athletics. When mm -hmm. in reality, there's much more of an overlap in terms of the body and psychological demand than anybody would think. And yeah. as such, you neglect this kinesiology element of it. So I guess speak to that and the importance of just the advocacy of that you would you would bring to the table of just stretching and being prepared, never mind undoing damage. Yes. So very interesting that you definitely mentioned that the musicians um, don't really think about kinesiology the way that dancers even or uh, sports do. And, and again, in sports and um, even in, in dancing, they uh, have kinesiology as part of their program, knowing where their body is and how to use it to their maximum potential so that they can do the, what they need to do. But in, in musicians, there's nothing really like that, um, I would say, until recently. And the Performance Arts Medicine Association is where there are a lot of um, uh, performance arts uh, disciplines um, where physicians, uh, there's musicians, along with um, psychologists, psychiatrists, they're all in this one membership of this association. And we're trying to, to pretty much put the word out there of how important it is, not just um, kinesiology and understanding the body, but understanding the, the stressors that affect um, musicians like not, you know, not just like the, um, the stretches, like you mentioned, but how is your posture? How is your instrument? Is the instrument too large, too small? Um, you know, there's so many aspects of 
why you would be ultimately injuring yourself, which is beyond just am I doing my stretches or did I do my scales? You know, there's a, there's so much more beyond that. And also I do always talk about um, what other things you do in your life besides music. Um, If you, some people have other jobs that they're doing as well and not having the, let's say ergonomics there can also affect what you do in music and also not being able to, recognize the the stress of everyday life um maybe there's stresses like um, financial um families all these things can affect pretty much how you play because if you have anxiety you have a lot of stressors in your life you're going to be tense and are you really going to be relaxed and being able to express the music that you want to and and feel like you have the dynamics to do what you want to do if you are all tense and you may not recognize that until injury happens and that's when it's kind of late but we're that's what I'm here for um but it's nice to know ahead of time how these things affect you what are some of the the, the quick hits i know that there's it's a uh, a, a degree program's worth of information that we're trying to cram into a portion of a, of a short podcast here, but just for anyone out there, j- just some mental notes to make in terms of posture, in terms of um, range of motion, in terms of just just some some simple things. I know that um, with what I'm battling right now, you know, my doctor, my physician, when she examined me a couple of weeks ago, she was like, "Well, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have your feet on the floor." And not cross-legged when you're sitting there, you know, whether you're working on an instrument or working inside the recording environment, because that alone creates a degree of tension that then starts to throw everything else off. And the next thing you know, you throw out your oblique. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The best thing I think would be is if you record yourself playing um, and something that you can look back and you can see maybe things that you don't realize that you're doing. So you're looking at it as a third person. So you may actually recognize right away, like, oh, I didn't know that I was holding it like this, or I was holding my breath, or I was not in the right position. So sometimes you may actually be able to recognize it just watching. Um, You can also recognize the sound as you're listening to it like a third person so if you're just kind of like oh I you know I'm I'm not playing this part as as well as I should be but why is that is that because is it really difficult or is it just because I'm actually putting my chin down too much or I'm putting uh, my instrument to look at the at the music a little closer or am I too focused so it's the you know, even like the music stand, is this too high? Is it too low? Is it too far? Um, those kinds of things are are quick and easy to, to try to see if you're looking at yourself when you're playing. Um, and so other things are when you're um, when you're taping or when you're recording yourself and you're watching it, do you notice that you're playing too hard? Are you holding the instruments too hard? Um, are your hands tired, fatigued right after you're done? Um, are you going too fast? You know, and so those kinds of things, again, I think it'll be good to, to just observe. Now, when, when people tend to look at themselves playing a lot, there's a lot of negative thoughts as well. Like, oh, that's not good enough. Oh or, yeah. I didn't <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I would say that if you're watching yourself play, be very objective of how you are playing, how you're seated, what is going on. So things like um, going too fast, holding too tight, looking down, um, this is too far, you know, things like that um, instead of, I don't like that, or, or that's, that's cringy, or that sounds bad, or, or, or I'm just not doing this hard enough, or, you know, so it's not something try to take your personal feeling out of it and try to look at things very objectively. And I always tell musicians, and and I think that they really get it, that if you're trying, if you're running and then you're all tight and then all your muscles are really tight as you're running, 
you're going to be really sore, very tired, and you're going to be running really weird and really um, very ineffective. And that's the biggest word. Um, like you're going to like just doing it right now as I'm speaking and I'm holding my arms really tight as I'm speaking. I'm just like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. But if I'm doing that and then I'm trying to sound pretty, you know, with my instrument that it's like you're fighting yourself. So so the biggest thing I would say is look at your what you're doing and again, be very objective and no no negative self-talk. <laughs> no, nothing that's like feeling of, oh, I, I just didn't do this right. You know, it's no, it's, it's again, are you, like you mentioned, are your feet on the floor? Do you have a stool that you can put one foot in? Um, do you, how's your seat? How's your chair? Is your chair too hard, too deep, um, too wide, anything like that? Or are you, do you need a wedge? like between you and your chair so you're sitting more um, upright um, and so those things are, I think are, are very important and yeah. that's where I come in later on if, if it needs to be more than that yeah I think the ergonomic chairs and so on and so forth are obviously super important there's no question that it's an expense but it's probably one that's worth making if you're able to um, that's across the board not just for musicians uh, I, what, what instrument do you play um, I play the piano, the guitar, um, some bass, um, some percussion, and whatever else I want to pick up. The, awesome. the only thing, uh, um, um, I'm not like the most well-versed in wind instruments, but um, I do learn a lot from the people who do play. And um, right now I have two um, friends of mine. One is the violinist and the other one's a pianist. So um, I, I speak with them regarding um, the musician aspects, you know, the, the life of a musician. Um, yeah. I see it as a, I, I'm seeing things as a scientist and a, and a musician, but not by trade. So yeah. um, it's good to hear, you know, what people are really going through. And that helps me as well. <laughs> Support the podcast by visiting patreon.com slash Bartholomew Town or clicking the support link wherever you're listening right now. Do you want to reach tens of thousands of Rhode Islanders per month? Whether you're a small business, an organization, a political candidate, send me an email, bill at ripodcast.com, and I'll be happy to discuss some of the sponsorship packages that I offer where you can reach listeners through podcasting, radio, social media, and even more. Bill at ripodcast.com. Now back to B-Town. Yeah, that's the, first of all, kudos to you. That's an amazing blend of, uh, of talent right there. The, the, the <laughs> convergence of arts and science is something that um, I'm just so passionate about. I mean, we're seeing it in Ukraine right now, the convergence of, mm -hmm. uh, of arts and politics and what happens when you have a, an artist as a political leader. But right. some, something that I know uh, I've, I've experienced and I've seen a lot as well is not just in the performance of, of um of music, either in a practice or performance on stage or in the studio context, loading gear, moving gear, carrying guitar mm -hmm. cases, carrying instrument cases in and out of vehicles, so on and so forth. Boy, there's been a lot of injuries that have taken place that have literally taken bands or musicians out of the circuit for months um, just from carrying pieces of gear. What can you speak to about that? Because especially in the hand context, you know, if you're in the winter carrying three guitars at once trying to make it one trip in um that can be yes. problematic yeah so definitely uh, um you know it's very interesting because uh, covid has uh really dampered musicians and artists um and so there's uh you gotta go where the job is now you know yeah. and so there's a lot of travel um and I know that changing environments, um, traveling, being in the car, um, you know, all those things can build up tension. And so some things that you can do is if you have um, like a case that normally you would carry with your hand, see if there's a shoulder strap that you can use. Um, and so use more of your large muscles, like your core and your, your shoulders, rather than using your hands and your fingers, um, to, to carry, to lift, to, um, and definitely, you know, ideally not having three guitars in your hands at once <laughs> it would really be great. Um, but, but also you have to also do a little bit of mind prep 
before you get wherever it is that you get to. So one of the things that I, I like to have people do, like, let's say you're driving to get to a gig that you have is start, you know, not, not to like stress out as to what is this going to be, or I, I hope it turns out, but it's more be objective. All right. Let me just do my breathing. Let me just make sure, you know, um, I remember some of my mechanics. Um, let me just make sure I'm relaxed. You know, if there's some um, breathing techniques or relaxation techniques that you do before, even if it's like five minutes before you go on, um, do some mental prep, in other words, you know, and if you, if you see, um, you can always see um, an athlete before they do, like, let's say a diver, um, and you can see them or a runner, you see them like pause before they actually have to do their, their, um, their, their sport, like you can see them almost thinking or like a gymnast before they run down to do a vault, you know, a vault, I'm sorry. And um, they're going through everything they have to do in their mind before they do it. Yeah. And so by mentally preparing yourself on what you're doing helps for things to just come more naturally. And if and and not in a in a stressful way, but it's more like in a planning. Um, I'm planning. This is how it's gonna. Pl- I'm gonna plan this to go. But again, the the relaxation techniques are good. Stretches once you're there, and always breathe. Always kind of use the breathing. There's a lot of apps out there in your phone that it shows you how to breathe deep, and gives you uh, that that help. So I would think is is just kind of try to de-stress as much as you're able to just think about um, just the try to be positive and just try to really relax your muscles. Last couple of minutes here, and I, I certainly want to um, give people information of how they can uh, find you and what, you know, u- utilize the, the services at Spalding and so on and so forth. Um, but, uh, you know, a question I have is just in general, not just musicians, are you seeing an increase in um, upper extremity, either injury or issue as a result of the expanded work from home nature of things, or just in general, poor ergonomics. Is that something that is imagined or real from your perspective? Absolutely real. It definitely real. Um, especially if there are people who are working from home, like you mentioned, um, where at your job, you may have things, um, you know, like, like more ergonomically sound, like in your house, you're, you're sitting in the couch and then having your computer, or your laptop on your hand, you're not necessarily like looking at how am I doing ergonomically in my house, you know? Um, and so, so just regular work, um, that, that is affected and even, um, musicians as well. Um, it's, you know, now that, it, you know, COVID has happened, there's a lot of changes that people have to, had gone through. Um, so ergonomically, um, even if you're working in a restaurant and things like that, there's a, a lot more stress, of course, because you you want to make sure that you have this job and do it well. Um, but yes, unfortunately, there's a, a lot more home things going on um, that, that people are not really um, you know, careful as to how they are doing when they're home versus when they're in, you know, the music school or, or where somebody else is watching them or, or um, in the office. So, yeah, so they, um, that's why it's important to do stretches and kind of be less tense. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So how can people get a hold of you or, or utilize your services? Um, if, if they feel like, uh, they didn't follow any of those instructions over <laughs> the last 10, 5, 10, 20 years, and now they, they need to undo some damage. Yes. So um, I mostly work out of the Providence um, office, which is right in the Butler campus. Um, it's is actually the, the first building right when you get on the, uh, the driveway, but it's 100 Butler Drive and it's Spalding. Um, our number there is 401-680-4480. That would be probably the best place to contact me. I'm also in East Greenwich one time of the week. So um, at that point, um, I would say just call that same number because I'm in a lot of different places, but the Providence number, they know where I am all the time. Um, So again, that's 680-4480. And if you're going to be um, seeing me for music, just let the 
front desk person know that um, I'm a musician and I'm looking to be seen for whatever. You do need a doctor's prescription, so um, you can have your primary care write a prescription for um, for occupational therapy and then for musicians. They, they can put like musician in there. And so we know ahead of time that that's for musician. And if you have an instrument that you can carry, um, uh, if you can bring it in on that first day, that way I can also um, assess your your posture and see what's going on on that first day. Um, so if you have any questions, also you can email me at kpsmith at kentri.org. And I can also answer some questions if you're not so sure. And um, yeah, um, I've been in Spalding now uh, since 2019 um, and and love being down here, not having to travel to Boston anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> I appreciate being in Rhode Island and I love it here. Um, but I would love to, to hear from people who, even if you just have questions and not sure, I can um, guide you in what you may need as well. This is Inside Rhode Island Public Health on the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Rhode Island's podcast of record, B-Town. At HealthSource RI for Employers, we provide access to health insurance to more than 1,100 local businesses and nonprofits, and 96% of them renew through us every year. Maybe it's our choice of 19 different health plans, our 10 years of customizing solutions, or our one local team of dedicated experts helping employers find quality health insurance. See how our numbers stack up for you. Learn more at healthsourceri.com/employers.